Hello Divination and welcome to our brand new mini series on how to create a simple and effective portfolio website using Divi. In this mini series we'll be covering everything that you need to know in order for you to create your own portfolio website from scratch. The goal of our mini series is to provide you with tips and techniques to help you enhance your design skills with Divi. This is the design that we are aiming to achieve by the end of this video. I'll be showing you step by step how to build this minimal yet elegant portfolio homepage. Okay, so before we get started, I'm going to go through the assets that we're going to need in order for us to achieve this layout design. So firstly, there's some CSS code we will be using throughout this tutorial. And also we're going to be using some images. So in regards to the images, you need to make sure that they're royalty free. We got all our images from unsplash.com and they're free to use in your projects, which is good. And also we recommend that you use a width of 1920 pixels and make sure that your images are landscaped to achieve the best results. Now the link to all the resources that we can use in this tutorial will also be linked in the show notes below. So you can always just click that link and you'll find all the CSS code and all the step-by-step -step on how to create this page. Let's dive in and let me show you how to get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is to create some pages. So I'm gonna go to pages and then click on add new. So the first page we're gonna create here is the about page. So go ahead and publish it. The next page is the portfolio page. Again, we can go ahead and publish it. So these are the two pages that are going to contain the information that we need. If we take a quick look at the website, which I'll open in a new tab, you'll see that we have the navigation here, but we need to make sure that we have two links. So we can see we have home, about home, portfolio. So we need to customize that to make sure that we have two pages. So in order for us to do that, we need to go to appearance, and then menu. So the reason why we're coming here is we need to create a specific menu for our website. Let's go ahead and call this main menu or you can call it whatever you want. Okay, so now that we have uh, created our menu, you need to make sure that you add the pages to the menu. So I'll just select those two pages and click on add to menu. Right, so these are the two pages that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save menu. Now, we're not done yet because what we've done is we just created the menu. We need to make sure that we select that menu. So we need to go to manage locations and then on the primary menu, you need to make sure that you select the menu that we've just created. So once you've selected the uh, primary menu, go ahead and click on save changes. So now if we refresh this page, you'll see that we'll have those two links right here at the top. Okay, so the next thing we need to do here is to customize that header area. And to do that, what we need to do is to come here to Divi and then go to Theme Customizer. Okay, we need to go to Header and Navigation and then Primary Menu Bar. Okay, so the settings here are as follows. The menu height, leave it at 66. The logo max height at 54. The text size needs to be 24. I mean, leave the letter spacing as it is. Now here the font, we, it needs to be open sans light. Uh, by default, it's set to default, but we need to make sure that it's open sans light. That's our custom font that we'll be using. Okay, so I'll just select that. Okay, so our text color needs to be RGBA 0.0.0.55. Okay, so next we need to um, set the background color and the background color is fine as white, which is brilliant. The drop down menu color needs to be black. So let's just scroll down here and set that to black. And then the drop down text color needs to be set to RGBA 0.0.0.55. So that's looking good so far. Next, we just need to go ahead and save and publish. Now it's time to set the fixed, the fixed uh, navigation settings. Okay, so here again, the text size needs to be 24 just to match what we have in the previous settings. And then we need to go ahead and sort out the colors as well. So the primary menu background needs to be white, which is good here. And also the primary menu link color needs to be the RGBA value, which is 0.0.0.55. .0 .0 .0 
And then finally, our active primary link color needs to be set to black, okay? Right, so once we're done with that, we can go ahead and save and publish. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our social media icons onto our navigation bar. And to do that, we need to go to DV, Theme Customizer, and then here we need to go to Menus, and then select your main menu that we created earlier on. So mine is named Primary Menu, so I'm just gonna click on that, and then you need to click this blue button. Right, so what you need to do next is to go to Custom Links. Here you need to type the social, uh, media net, uh, the social media network. And in this case, I'm gonna start off with Twitter. So I'm just gonna type in twitter.com. And then here we need to add some code which will bring the icon onto the navigation area. So this is the code that we're gonna add and this code can also be found in the link provided in the show notes below. So after I've done that, all I need to do now is to just add it to the menu. Okay, next we need to add one more and this time it's Instagram. And we also need to add the link. Okay, so now that we've added the, uh, the code, what we need to do is to click on add to menu. Okay, so now we can click on save and publish. Next, what we need to do is to add some CSS code for these buttons to show. So here you can see mine are showing, that's because I've uh, added the uh, CSS code already, but I'll just show you where that CSS code goes. Okay, so I'm gonna close that, and then we're gonna come all the way here to Divi, and then we're gonna go to theme options. So scroll all the way down until you see the CSS section, so this code is what makes these buttons on the top show. So if I remove this code, which will be the case um, when, you, when you first come to the CSS section, right? you'll notice that um, if we go to the site and refresh, nothing will show. But as soon as we add this code onto the CSS area and save the changes and we refresh the page, you can see now the CSS code has now brought these buttons to life. Okay, so that's all you need to do to make uh, these social media icons appear on our navigation bar. Okay, and again, if you click these links, they'll take you to Twitter and this one will take you to Instagram. If you'd like to add more social media icons, what we've done is we've added a list of other codes that you'd need for the other ones like Facebook, YouTube, and so on. So all you need to do is to click the link in the show notes below, that will take you to the post, which will have all those extra codes. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to add our custom footer. Now before we can add our custom footer, we, we first need to get rid of this default footer that comes with Divi. Okay, so to do that, what we need to do is to add some CSS code onto this um, custom CSS area. So I'm just gonna, and just making sure that the code is not within the brackets of this code that we entered earlier on. We just need to paste that code. And here we can see that um, what this code does, it just stops that footer from displaying. And hence here we have this display none. Okay, so I'm gonna click on save changes. And if we refresh our page, this should make our footer disappear. So if I refresh now, you can see now it's gone. So now we have the opportunity to add our custom footer. Okay, and then what we need to do here is to make sure that the text orientation is set to center, like that. So that's looking good. And then what you could do here is you can actually link these, um, like for example here, elegant themes. So you can just create a link so people can link to the actual website. And to do that, you just need to click this uh, chain icon and then add your URL. In this example, I'm just gonna add a blank URL, click OK, and I'm gonna do the same for WordPress. Okay, so that's looking good so far. So that's gonna link to those um, those websites or link to whatever link that you set, up, set it up to be. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on Save Changes. And then next I'm gonna add another one. So I'm gonna add another row. And this time this is where all our 
social media icons are going to go. Okay, again, I'm going to go into the text mode and we need to paste this code right here. And again, as I mentioned before, this code can be found on the actual post which I've linked in the show notes below. Okay, so now that you've entered that, just make sure that the text orientation is center and then just go ahead and save the changes. So you may have noticed that the uh, icons are not showing. This is because we need to do one more step, which is to add some CSS code. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and save the changes here and then add the CSS code that we need for these icons to show. So now that this page is saved, I'm just going to click on exit the builder. And then I'm going to go to our dashboard, Divi, theme options, and then we're going to scroll all the way down to the custom CSS area. And then just make sure that we add the code right at the bottom and making sure that you don't add the code inside those brackets because this affects that code. So now if we save this and refresh our page, we should be able to see all our icons. So I'm going to come here to our contact page that we've been working on. Now, if you refresh, now you can see that we have those two icons. Now, if we go to a different page, for example, the about and contact, this footer area will not show because these changes are being done on the portfolio page. So in order for us to have a simple workflow, what we need to do is to make this section a global section, which means it's easier for us to just add it onto the pages as we go along. Because right now, if we try to put this on this about uh, and contact page, we would have to build this information from scratch. Okay, so let me show you how to make this section a global section. Okay, so what we need to do here is to come right here on this section and click this button which says save section to library. Okay, let's give this a name. So we can just call this minimal footer. Like that. Now here's the key. We need to make sure that this is set to uh, make this item global, right? So I've just checked, and, uh, checked that box. And now we can save this to uh, save this to library. Okay. And you can see here now this color has changed. So now that we have our header and our footer sorted, the next thing we need to do now is to start working on our portfolio module. As mentioned before, we're going to need 20 images of a width of 1920 and make sure that the height is also uniform. So before we can do anything meaningful, meaningful on this portfolio module, what we need to do is we need to create some portfolio projects. So let me show you how to add your project. So here in the uh, WordPress admin, what you need to do is to come to projects, add new, give your project a name and also a featured image and then click publish. Okay. So you need to create 20 of these projects and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and show you the next steps. Okay. So now that we've added all the projects and we've also added a featured image, which is located right here. Next, what we need to do is to go to our landing page and add the portfolio. So we're going to go to pages and then click on portfolio. Click on use visual builder. Okay, so here we can see it's all blank. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the footer. So to do that, I'm going to click on add new section and then I'm going to click on add from library. Now, if you recall, we made a global mini footer earlier on. So I'm just going to click on that and then that's going to bring all the elements that we need. So here on the on this top um, section, what we're going to do is we're going to add a single row and then we're going to add the portfolio in here. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to make some adjustments. So first of all, the number of posts needs to be 20. Change the layout from full width to grid. Disable uh, the titles and uh, also the categories and the pagination. Okay, so now that we've got that in place, what we need to do is to go ahead and save. And then let's just do a preview. Okay, so we can see all our images are there. So what we need to do next now is to make this full width. So to do that, we're going to go into the row settings and then we're going to make this row full width. So I'm just going to click on that and now you can see it's um, now expanded to, fill, to fit the whole page. Next, what we need to do is to go to use custom gutter width 
and we're going to adjust this and make this one. OK, so now we've reduced the space between the images. So, OK, that's looking good. So what we need to do here is uh, for now, we're just going to go ahead and save. Now it's time to go in and adjust the, um, the icon and also the overlay color. So to do that, I'm going to go into the module settings. Click on design. So first of all, we're going to change this zoom icon color to white. And then the hover overlay color needs to be a, a very transparent gray. Okay, so I'll start off with black and then I'm just going to lower until I get to about 76. Okay, that's looking good. And then here what we need to do is uh, choose any icon. So since this is a portfolio layout, um, I'll just go on and choose this uh, camera icon. Okay, right here. So let's just do a quick test. Now you can see if I put my mouse over the image, it shows the, uh, the camera icon and also the overlay is actually working. Okay, so that's looking good. Now we need to do a few adjustments. Now we need to get rid of this white space right here and also that at the bottom. So to do that, what we need to do here is to go into the settings of the section and then we're just going to remove the padding top and also the padding bottom. Then we're, going to, we're just going to go ahead and save. Here we're also going to do the same thing because you can see here we still have the gap right here. So that's going to be in our row settings. So we're going to go into the row settings, go into the custom padding, make sure that it's set to zero and then the bottom is also set to zero. Go ahead and click on save. So that is looking good so far. If I scroll down, we can see that uh, the bottom also is looking quite good. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and save and then we're just gonna do a quick preview and see this in real time. So I'm gonna go ahead and save. And then I'm gonna exit the visual builder. Okay, so we can see we have achieved our desired result and this is a beautiful landing page. It's very minimal and it does the job. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. We will be producing more and more of these videos. Be sure to subscribe because by subscribing, you will be notified when we produce more videos. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.